and good afternoon, my future chef friends. Welcome to this month's episode of Fresh for Kids. So we are gonna make something very, very cool, very interesting, and this is one of those things that once you've learned how to make it, you're gonna be able to use this recipe so many times on so many different things. We are making Herbes de Provence, which Provence, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, it is a region in France, and it's called that because it was very popular and incorporates a lot of the herbs that are grown right there in that region. So what we're gonna make today with our Herbes de Provence, we are going to coat some delicious potatoes, yum, one of my favorite things, and we are going to roast them in the oven. So before we get started, let's make sure we have everything that we need. Of course, we have our potatoes. I prefer the fingerling pota potatoes, however, they did not have any at Publix when I went. So we have, this is called the Celebration Blend, and these are quite delicious. They have a lot of different varieties of potatoes in this bag. The purple ones are so yummy. And I'm also going to use about a medium-sized um, Vidalia or sweet onion. The sweet is gonna kind of balance the really strong flavors of all of these herbs. So Herbes de Provence is basically just a really um, interesting mix of different dried herbs put together. So we are going to be using rosemary. This herb is actually called savory. I had not heard of it until recently. Um, this is dried mint. I had a little bit of a hard time finding that jarred up, so I bought some fresh mint and dried it out in a in my oven at home, just on a very low temperature, which you can do with any of these herbs. Um, we are going to use basil. We are going to use tarragon, fennel seeds, marjoram, lavender, thyme, and parsley. So you're probably hearing these and you're thinking, so what's different about Italian seasoning blend and Herbes de Provence? A, a few of these things are most definitely in a traditional Italian blend of spices. However, maybe you didn't know that Italian blend spices were actually created in America. So we're gonna use some of those that are in that and a few other things like the lavender, the savory, um, those are all things that you definitely are not gonna find in an Italian blend. Um, and we are gonna use this fun tool. This is my mortar and pestle from home. It's granite, it is very heavy, as you can hear. Um, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna measure all of these spices, we're gonna put them into our mortar and pestle, and then we're gonna grind it up. That's the fun part. A lot of these are what we call hard herbs, like the rosemary, um, definitely the fennel seed. These are things that you don't wanna garnish with unless they have been cooked and fully prepared and processed. And the um, process of smashing open those seeds when we crush it in our mortar and pestle will allow all the flavors uh, that are inside those seeds to come out. So, first we are going to measure all of the things that we need. Actually, my measuring spoons are right here. So I'm gonna measure all of those out and put them into my mortar and pestle and then we are going to get started with the fun part. Be back in just a few. And we're back. So of course, the first thing that you wanna do, and I should have already mentioned this, we are going to make sure that our oven is preheated to 400 degrees so that once we're ready prepping, all of our potatoes, onions, and herbs, they will be, the oven will be ready for us to put that in. So here in the bowl of my mortar and pestle, I have one tablespoon of fennel seed, two tablespoons of rosemary, a quarter cup thyme, uh, three tablespoons of marjoram, one tablespoon of savory, one tablespoon of tarragon, two tablespoons of parsley, 
one teaspoon of mint, and one teaspoon of lavender. You wanna make sure you don't get too much of either of those last two. Um, they can be very overwhelming. The mint, of course, you've all had mint candies or mint gum, you know how powerfully strong that flavor can be. So we don't want too much of that, just enough to kind of lighten it up. And the lavender definitely gives it more of a perfumey almost feel, so for sure you don't want to put too much of that in there. And today we are using lavender seeds. You can also use dried lavender flowers. Um, this flavor will be less intense with the flowers than it is with the seeds, but still delicious. So now that we have all of that in our mortar and pestle, we are going to smash it. Like I said, we want to make sure we get all those seeds ground up to release the yummy flavors that are inside of them and also that dried mint um, that I processed in my oven at home are still full leaves so we want to make sure we smash those up and get them smaller like the rest of the herbs that are in here. So like I said, this is definitely the fun part. You get to build up your muscles. I just got this mortar and pestle for Christmas actually. I had a smaller wooden one that I had been using for years and years. Um, I actually am very, very fond of herb and spice blends and I make a lot of seasoned salts and spice mixtures at home. So a mortar and pestle comes in really super handy for that. So give this a few minutes of smashing. And mortar and pestles are centuries and centuries old. This is one of the first tools, um, kitchen tools really that, that were used. Um, and they have come a long way. I can tell you that for sure. This smells really great too. And like I said, it is a very strong flavor. So you can use this on just about anything. You can put it on roasted vegetables. You could put it on pretty much any form of protein, fish, chicken, turkey, um, beef, pork. It really can be used on anything, but it is a very, very aggressive flavor profile. So I would suggest to you that if you are putting this on your meat, make sure your vegetables are not over seasoned. If you're putting it on your vegetables, make sure your meat is not over seasoned because putting this on both would um, kind of leave a little to be desired as far as getting some relief from all of that strong, strong flavor. And certainly we will not be using all of this that I'm crushing up today. We're only going to be using a couple tablespoons of it for our potatoes, but this can be kept up to six months in your pantry as long as you keep it in an airtight container. But this is also a really fun gift giving thing. If you made a few batches of this and put them in cute little containers, you could give these away for holiday gifts. I might just do that. All right, so we've got this all crushed up, nice and fine. Probably a little tough to see on there, but we were able to crack open all those seeds. So they're all blended together. It looks lovely. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm going to rinse my potatoes and I'm gonna cut those in half lengthwise. And then I am going to chop up my onion into half moons. I will be right back to show you what we'll do with all of that. Hello, and we are back. All right, so here's what I did while I was away. I chopped our onion into little half moon shapes, and I sliced our potatoes in half lengthwise. The potatoes are joining the party. Run right away, potato. All right, so we've got those mixed together. Now we are going to add some olive oil. You can use whatever kind of oil you like. My preference is always for olive oil. However, if you prefer vegetable oil, canola oil, what have you, you use what works best for you. I'm gonna put a couple tablespoons of oil so that we coat everything completely. Not 
really a, a solid measurement on that. Just kind of go with what makes your heart happy and how much oil you normally like to have on things. So let's mix that up. We want to make sure that all of the potatoes and all of the onions are coated in that oil so that the herbs will stick to it. All right. In addition to that, we're going to add some black pepper. And again, this is one of those things like to your taste preference. Maybe you don't like black pepper, don't use it at all. I will definitely recommend adding some sea salt or kosher salt uh, because there's not a bit of salt in any of the produce that we are using. And um, salt definitely heightens whatever flavor profile you're working with and really brings out the best in each flavor. So we definitely want to add some salt. A pinch, whatever, however much you normally like to use, but I'd go for probably about at least a tablespoon or so because potatoes definitely taste better when they have some salt. So let's mix that up. We're just going to mix it at each part. That way everything gets fully incorporated and evenly coated. Another thing that's important to keep in mind with um, your potatoes or really any piece of produce that you are chopping and you're going to be applying heat and cooking, you want to make sure that they are relatively the same size so that they all cook at the same rate. You don't want little teeny tiny pieces to get overcooked or very, very large pieces to be undercooked. Nobody likes a raw potato. So now is the fun part. We are gonna add, I'm gonna go with two tablespoons full of our Herbs de Provence mixture. So I'll just sprinkle that over. And then, like I said, the rest of that, I'm just gonna seal up in an airtight container, put it in my pantry, and it is ready to be used on uh, the next recipe that I want to have a lot of herb flavor. So we're just gonna fold these in. Remember, folding is when we take our spoon or mix spatula, rubber, rubber scraper, whatever you've got, and you're gonna take it and you're gonna push it down the sides of the bowl and come up from underneath. And it's just gentler to whatever it is that you are mixing. So we have got a good coating of those herbs on our potatoes and our onions. So next, we're gonna take our baking sheet. I have covered this with foil. It makes cleanup a snap. So let's go ahead and put these out onto our pan. We'll just even these out. And the delicious part about using these onions is that after they've been in the oven for the required time, because um, they cook a little bit quicker than the potatoes do, they start to caramelize and oh, it is such a lovely, lovely flavor with those herbs. All right, so we've got a nice flat, even layer of potatoes and onions on our sheet. And then I'm gonna put this in our oven, which is preheated to 400 degrees. I'm gonna put it in for 20 minutes, and then I'm gonna check it, and I'm gonna turn them over to make sure that they get browned on both sides. So I'm gonna pop this in the oven, and we will be back when they are ready to eat. See you in a minute. While our potatoes are roasting away in the oven, I thought you might like to learn a few other really fun facts about Herbs de Provence. It's been around, like I said, for a long, long time, and the reason that it's called Herbs de Provence, like I mentioned earlier, is because they are, it, it includes a lot of the herbs that grow in that region of France, which is the southeast region of France. Um, the biggest city or most well-known city in that region would be Marseille, um, but it's a beautiful, beautiful region. Um, I definitely would like to visit there someday. Um, it is famous for quite a few things. There are many, many artists who have painted the landscape there. Van Gogh, Cezanne, um, Let's see, Gauguin, just to mention a few. Um, some other things that 
Provence is famous for are their lavender fields, which of course is why that's one of the ingredients that we are using. Um, lots of really, really rustic and lovely hilltop villages. Um, the French markets are amazing. Another reason why I'd really like to go. Uh, there are about nine or ten very, very popular, robust uh, French markets where you can buy just about anything you can possibly imagine that has a French origin. Indeed, the chefs in Provence have been making their very own versions of this uh, herb mixture uh, for centuries, but it did not become quite as popular uh, until Miss Julia Child introduced it in the 1960s in one of her cookbooks. And after that, it was a smashing hit and it is used uh, all over the place in fine dining, of course, but even some restaurants that aren't super duper expensive fancy places to eat will use it um, in fun ways on their menus as well. I think that you are really going to love it and I am super excited for you to make these potatoes and try this out yourself. So we will be back in just a little bit as soon as those potatoes get finished roasting. Hello potato lovers, we are back. Man, if I could just give you one little whiff of how wonderful this whole room smells. Actually, I think the whole library smells quite delicious and I think any minute now people are gonna come banging down the doors trying to figure out what I'm cooking because it smells that delicious. So. I put these in a 400 degree oven. We baked them on 20 minutes. I took it out, flipped everything over, put it back in for another 20 minutes. They weren't quite done to my liking. I like them to be a little bit brown and crispy on the outside. So I put them back in for five more minutes. That is all a matter of personal preference, but the real test of course is to take a fork and test one of the thicker pieces of potato and if it goes in easily and just slides right on in that means your potatoes are finished and they are ready to take out so as you can maybe see I don't know if you can get a good angle on this the onions have caramelized so those will be a little bit sweeter and will balance out the aggressive herbiness of the Herbes de Provence um, can't wait for this to cool down so that I can dig in and have this for lunch. I hope you enjoyed watching this. I hope you enjoy making your own herbs to Provence. And if by chance you don't have a mortar and pestle, if you've got an herb grinder or a coffee grinder that works just as well, have a wonderful, wonderful time making this yourself. And I can't wait to hear all the delicious things that you season with your new herb mix. Have a great day and we will see you next time on Fresh for Kids here at the Maitland Public Library. Bye.